good afternoon to all of you. So we'll start with a small scenario. Imagine you are in a courtroom and the judges doesn't look at you. Instead, they look at a piece of paper and a number written on it and it says you're high risk and you're denied bail. And this number just came from a machine learning algorithm and no explanation, no justification, no second chance, just a number, just jail. I'm not talking about science fiction. What I've just shown here is a number from an algorithm called the Compass, which is used across the United States and most of the courts to anticipate who may commit a crime in the near future. But here's the catch. This particular algorithm is twice as likely to label black defendants as dangerous, even when they weren't, and white defendants as safe, even when they weren't. So this is the very way in which AI is shaping our lives in ways which are unfair, unaccountable, and invisible. I'm sure all of us will agree with the fact that in the last two to three years, artificial intelligence has changed the way in which we work, the way in which we learn, and even the way in which we send a mail to someone, or even the way we talk. So there are a lot of statistics about AI. I just mentioned a couple of that. 72% of the organization around the AI, around the world, they use AI for their maybe daily operations. Also, 92% of the people around the world are aware that AI is used in cars. But only 18% are aware of the fact that AI is also used for welfare decisions. So I just want to ask a very human question. What kind of humanity are we coding into our machines? Because if you look at the past of humanity, we have never had a fair past. Because we had our own flaws, our own stereotypes, our own blind spots. And we say that AI learned from data. So the data is all about us. So obviously, all these flaws, blind spots, and all these things get embedded into the models which we are building. Let's take the example of Amazon hiring, a uh, hiring algorithm to shortlist resumes. So I just would like to invite you to a split screen visual. On the left hand side, you have a resume which says good candidate. On the right hand side, a nearly identical resume, but it's, it's flat with a red letter uh, written, like highlighted, saying women's chess captain highlighted in red. So here what has happened is they have built this tool with almost a decade of data, mostly males in tech or the hiring, they were mostly males. So the AI has kind of imbibed this particular pattern and it thought that whenever you see the particular uh, word women, it has to be penalized. So what has happened is this algorithm started penalizing or kind of rejecting application from all women's colleges and also any female-led initiatives were rejected like out of way. So AI doesn't hate women, it just imbibed or absorbed our past. And unfortunately, our past was sexist. So that's the danger. AI doesn't just mirror us, it magnifies us. And sometimes we don't even know what is it magnifying. And what if, if you give this sort of flawed intelligence the power to accuse? Again, I'm saying I'm not just making a statement here. There was an incident in Czech Republic where a student called Matthew Bauchek had helped another student from getting almost expelled from the school. So what has happened is the teacher has given, an, given them to write an essay and the student has written that in Czech 
and the student and the teacher use the AI plagiarism tool known as zero GPT to check whether the essay was AI generated or not. And it was, it came up with a result that 99% saying that 99% of the content is AI generated. But this student has written it completely on his own. So this particular boy, Matthew, he decided to investigate on this tool. He ran his own experiments. And what has happened is, he proved that the tool is flawed. So here we see a scenario where one student saved another student, not from a bad teacher, but from a bad algorithm. So this is what AI is capable of doing. So I would like to take you up maybe 100 years back onto a story of a particular horse which assumed to do math calculation and assumed that it had intellectual capabilities. So this horse name is the Hans, the horse, which was in the 20th century, became a sensation or we would say viral in the 20th century. And this horse used to communicate the answers by tapping the hoof. So if you ask a question like what is two plus three, Hans the horse would tap the hoof five times. So initially scientists thought that definitely this horse has human, I mean reasoning skills of like human level. They were kind of baffled and interviewed and they started uh, doing further investigation and then they found out that Hans the horse is not doing math. Instead, it is getting unconscious, subtle, physical cues from his trainer and also the people around the place where he was standing. So which means that whenever someone asks a question, the horse would, tap, would start tapping the hoof. And uh, whenever it is near the answer, obviously somebody in the observer or even his trainer will have a sense of anxiety or relief in his face or in his body language. The horse will sense that and it will understand that, okay, this is the place where I have to stop and it magically stopped the tapping. That's how it worked. So here, it seemed that the horse is intelligent and it seemed that the horse has a lot of insights. So what we learn from this clever hands effect or clever hands problem is that even sometimes you may be able to mimic the intelligence even without even understanding what is happening inside. So even artificial intelligence in certain contexts, in certain scenarios, it might be, we might be thinking that it's, it is intelligent, but it just seems intelligent and it seems that it is insightful, but what it may do is it may be just picking up the hidden patterns in the data. This is where the idea of what if we involve us in these decision process? That's what the crux of responsible AI is all about. So which means that instead of having a man versus machine chronicle or AI versus machine or AI versus man, why can't we have a, have a scenario where AI with human or AI with human invo involvement or AI with human in the loop? So there are certain products which are which have already started doing these sort of things. So especially uh, the case which I, I would like to mention here is there was a steel factory and the workers were finding it difficult to kind of automate the process of finding the defects in the steel sheets they are rolling out. So they have applied different ML algorithms and they were not successful. And then came this particular company called Landing AI and what they have done is, they didn't just build a model and gave it to the factory workers. Instead, they collaborated with the workers and they asked them to annotate the defects on their own because they are the, they are the ones with, with, with the, the top expertise in finding out defects in steel sheets. So here, instead of removing the humans, the humans were respected. So, ideally, Ethical AI is all about involving AI along with humans, but it's not as easy as we think because most of the models what you see around today, they're not built to collaborate. 
they are built to compute so they may be doing a lot of maths lot of calculation and you have all these things like neural networks where you have layers and layers of uh, neural network uh, layers and ultimately that leads to a decision so you have a lot of maths being uh, applied there so let's see what really happens inside the hood so i'm sure all of us in this room are observing what is happening around as human beings we we tend to do that like what is happening the moment you moment you wake up till the time you sleep you keep observing what is happening around you and there are times sometimes you get mistaken for certain things for example at least couple of times the black sweater lying on the floor i assumed that to be my dog which is also black in color so there are certain times human beings over attribute intelligence the same can happen as far as the intelligence is concerned so the question here is are we having the clever hands moment as far as ai is concerned i'm not against ai definitely ai has lot of potential lot of uh, things it is solving all these neural networks what it is capable of doing is to understand the patterns so imagine that you are trying to understand like who gets a loan or who gets hired so in all these cases the neural network doesn't know what is it what it does is lot of number crunching most of these neural network it might be trained maybe to improve the accuracy i'm sure all of us use chat gpt you just give chat gpt and tells that hey build me a model with 95% accuracy and it just builds right so your target is that whatever is is it classifying or whatever it is doing i need to have that 95% accuracy as my goal so the model will do anything and everything to show and impose that it has 95% accuracy now what happens here is that i'm sure at least some of you would have heard about good hart's law whenever a measure becomes a target it ceases to be a good measure it's also known by another name called the cobra effect because in colonial india the british wanted to reduce the number of cobra bites within the subcontinent so what they have done is they said like who are brings a dead cobra they'll get a bounty now what the people have done is they started breeding cobras so that they can bring that dead ones to the government so this is what happens when the target when the measure becomes a target it ceases to be a good measure the same can happen as far as the all the neural networks and ai which we see around we focus on accuracy we may focus on speed and in that run we may really lose the essence of what it is really doing and what harm it can bring on the way what if like the model is uh, coming up with a <clears throat> with a bad decision how do you know that because what you have told the model is hey just acquire the the accuracy or the efficiency and uh, just do it so we have a tendency that whenever you see something accurate we assume that it is right but it is not always the case because if you want ai to understand people we have to understand ai first so till this time we used to supply data and from data basically we used to build algorithms so data is all about us and maybe it is challenging or it is a time where we start thinking about building algorithms that can understand people because every data point you see getting plotted it is about a human life especially in high stake applications such as policy welfare decision these kind of areas because every decision is all about a maybe life changing uh, point for for that data point it could be about health it could be about dignity it could be about food because not all ai recommendation is about maybe movie recommendation or advertisement recommendation it's more and something very very serious we have been working with a social welfare scheme project it was a data science project and the intention was to build a ml model including deep learning and we have built a model which can suggest the specific social welfare scheme to a particular person so we have been working with a data set of a particular state within india and we have noted that for a same or similar kind of profile 
the particular model has suggested different schemes even though everything looked same. So initially we were baffled. We thought that maybe the algorithm understood some pattern which we have kind of missed. So we wanted to find out, we started digging deeper into this issue. And then we found something really, really interesting and we were kind of shocked with that. Because the AI model, we are supplied with data about income, about family background, about education, all these things were there, including the maybe the, the vulnerability tax. So out of this, the model has taken the primary parameter for deciding the welfare scheme. The parameter it has taken was the name of the person. So your, your background doesn't matter, your income doesn't matter, your education doesn't matter. The model was just doing it based on the name. Maybe it was because of maybe few names were underrepresented earlier and it just took that as a pattern. So this is where we realized if our models are not transparent, if you don't know why the model has taken a specific decision, we may not be in a place to decide whether the model is good or bad. So this is where the, the significance of explainable AI comes into picture where we are trying to make all these black boxes into glass boxes, where you will be able to interrogate the model, asking why it has taken the decision, what decision and how it has been taken. And we have even come up with our own dashboards for the same. So for example, if a model has put someone in a, in a particular welfare scheme, it can tell on what all parameters, maybe 70% it was dependent on the total income and maybe 20% on the family background and 10% on the education. So the clear explanation about the decision was uh, given. So, and also before even you put it, put the particular model in the real scenario, you can understand what the model is all about. So we are at a juncture in, in the history of AI where we can decide how the future is all about. Because AI is not artificial anymore, it is authored. And who are the authors? We are the authors. Every model we build. So let us make sure that we reimagine humanity and we reprogram AI and let's make AI worthy of us.